everyone this is sonali thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on uncertain times for job seekers how to get back to jobs to all the attendees out there please type in any questions you might have in the q and a section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session i would now like to introduce our speaker a serial entrepreneur with 25 years of experience in technology leadership Narayan Mahadevan is the founder of IP driven incubation lab Bridge Labs an AWS recognized company Bridge Labs focuses on increasing employability and nurturing ideas as well as talents in the emerging technologies domain Narayan oversees the overall operations and functions at the company with this i would like to welcome you mr narayan hope you are doing good yeah doing well absolutely Um, yeah, Sonali couldn't hear you. I'm saying yeah, you can just take it forward from here now. Okay, I can take it forward from here. Okay, so I'll share my screen and uh, I'll 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 start talking. Right. Uh, so so just before I start sharing my screen and uh, start talking about uh, uh, you know uh, you know the the employability for job seekers here, right. So essentially. Uh, Uh, yeah, you know, for for last five years, Bridge Labs has been doing that. You know, working with uh, thousands of tech companies, essentially, uh, to figure out how do we create tech employability for our engineers. So that's what we bring to table, and our learnings is what I'm going to share here, right? Uh, so it is, uh, it is working with so many uh, hardcore tech companies, product companies, right? Services industry, right? What what is it they are looking for in an engineer? So that that's the learning that I want to bring here to you guys, right? And uh, you know, take it forward from there, right? So yeah, uh, so I'll I'm going to share my screen, close my video, share my screen. right and uh, st start the presentation uh yeah sonali you need to uh, enable the uh, screen sharing yeah of course uh, is there an option showing now no i can't uh, screen share yet okay. it is saying host disabled the screen share okay just check now oh uh, yeah now it's fine yeah so let me uh, so i hope everybody can see my screen yeah right uh so so essentially you know we're going to talk about how do we uh, you know in this uncertain times right covid 19 uh right how do we how do we get back to jobs right how do we get back to uh jobs that actually uh, not temporary but it is going to give us uh, you know permanent gains right uh, constantly and uh, our focus is predominantly tech so technology is our focus technology jobs is our focus so we will uh, uh, we will constantly uh, keep focusing only on tech jobs right how do we get back to tech jobs right uh, so uh, so where are the jobs right uh, this is a constant thing every engineer that we talk to right keeps asking us right uh, why engineers don't get job right what's the, what's the reason right and uh, surprisingly you will find that uh, many of you are uh, uh, eligible employable but uh, uh, but you know you are not yet there right and uh, and how how do we go about doing that right are there jobs right now uh, in this covid 19 scenario and post covid 19 right and uh, how do we apply this to everyday life right i don't know what do we whatever we are learning today how do we apply this uh, to get to that dream job right so that's the focus point here right uh, uh most important right uh, uh, stay till the end and uh, we have an announcement for you where you can join one of our programs right uh, it is free it is essentially gets you into uh, uh in a in a get started mode in a tech world so hang in there and uh, we'll share with you the google form and others in the end so that you can register right uh, so so this is uh you know uh, the picture here you know truly uh, you know symbolizes the the real environment today right everyone seems to be fishing an empty pond what does that mean right we go to tech companies they say you know where are talent where are engineers i can't see 
right? And uh, yes, and we go to engineers, and they say, "Where are jobs?" Right? And essentially, everybody are looking at uh, at a pond that is no fish, right? Uh, and the truth is otherwise, right? The truth is there are plenty of jobs available. The truth is there are plenty of engineers available, right? Uh, both are in abundant supply in India, and unfortunately, we we are not looking at the right place. Both are not looking at the right place right so that's that's the whole end over here so so if you look at here right uh, this gives you the perspective of a global context and an india context right uh, every year right close to half a million jobs are getting created and less than 50% are only getting fulfilled that means 50% of the jobs are not getting fulfilled at all so that means companies are not able to fill up their vacancy that is a reality india alone we are talking about right and uh, the reason behind it is that company keeps saying that only 0.4% of our engineers are directly employable so we can't employ them we are not ready to employ them hence they are constantly looking uh, uh, in a pond where they will find some employable engineers. So that's the problem here, right? Uh, yeah, they are trying to look for engineers who are readily employable and they are not finding that, right? That's the unfortunate truth, right? Globally, if you look at it, uh, you know, uh, anywhere around two to three million jobs are getting created every year, right? Uh, and uh, there is only 6% unemployment among STEM graduates. What it essentially means that India has a humongous supply to not only fulfill the India needs, but also fulfill the global needs, right? And truly to that fact, if you see, out of 18 million engineers, you know, software engineers worldwide, right? India contributes more than 4 million engineers, right? More than 25% of the software engineering pool sits in India. So we are a global supply of software engineers, and that is the reality. So job exists not only in India, but also for uh, you know companies uh, in Western countries, in United States, in UK, where they are not able to fill up because there is no supply, they can look for Indian engineers. So that is the reality of the matter, is right. Uh, so uh, so uh, you know among this situation also, you would have seen constant uh, news items that Cap Gemini is uh, going to honor all their 8,000 engineers. So that means they do see their contracts are live, right? So, so across the board, right? Flipkart, Amazon, the finance, the tech companies, the health tech, they are all hiring. They are all hiring, uh, hiring engineers, right? And they are all constantly saying that they can't find engineers, even in this times, right? Uh, so that's what it is. Uh, so, so if this is the period, this is a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, chart out of 1.5 million, if you look at it, 0.4% of our engineers are directly employable, right? Out of a 1.5 million, right? And if you keep going down, right, you will see there is 42% of our, our engineers can be made tech employable, but they are not today. So what is happening is that the industry is trying to constantly find engineers who are readily employable, which are only 0.4%. Hence they complain, I can't find engineers, right? On the other hand, there are 42% of our engineers can be made tech employable, right? And uh, the, the, unfortunately, they, I will show you, they are not confident to code. Hence, they are not going and finding jobs at the right place and they are not finding jobs. So what I showed you the picture of an empty pond, right? Where uh, even the companies are not finding talent, the engineers are not finding jobs. This is the reality of the matter is. Right, we have 42% of engineers, that is half a million engineers close to, right, uh, can be made tech employable. Unfortunately, they are not uh, made tech employable, neither the industry is making, neither they are making it themselves. So that is the problem to be solved. That is what this, uh, this whole, uh, uh, you know, infographics is trying to highlight. Right, uh, so, so why is the reason, right, why, why companies are not able to find, right, the predominant reason being uh, that our engineers are not ready to code. They are not confident to code. 50% of them have a fear of coding, right? Much higher than the aptitude or, uh, uh, you know, uh, lack of coding knowledge. They are not confident, right? Uh, the confidence is a problem here, right? Why they are not confident? We have to keep answering this question, right? Why this is happening? 
right? Uh, why 42% of our engineers, that is half a million engineers, can find tech jobs, right? Can be made employable to tech, but are not getting the tech jobs. The reason being 50% of them are not confident to code. Now, why they are not confident to code? 43% say that they haven't done any live projects, right? Uh, yeah, you know, majority are having this fear of coding because I don't know how the live environment is. I've never been involved in coding in a live environment, in a live projects. So I, I'm not confident, right? So the, uh, the, the, the live environment gives me that confidence to be hands-on, be hands-on coding to take up that tech job, which the industry is wanting, right? Industry is also not relaxing anyway. Industry wants readily employable engineers. Right, the readily employable engineers have a, uh, you know, uh, you know, they are, but there are many. The reason being, they are not confident. The reason why they are not confident because they are not really have worked on any live projects. They have not coded any live and, uh, you know, in, in 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 any live real world problems. So hence, that confidence is low, right? So is it's as, as if saying the same thing, right? Can I learn uh, learn to ride a bike, right? Uh, you know, without just by watching a YouTube video. Can I learn to swim just by watching a YouTube video, right? But if I want to ride a bike, I need to ride a bike. If I need to swim, I need to get into a pool. I don't have a choice. I can't see a YouTube video. So the major reason why our engineers have lack of coding is that they have not practically coded. They have not practically coded real world problems. And that becomes the true problem why they are not employable, even though they can be made employable. So that is the uh, that is the journey. That is the journey for the engineers. That is the journey for the industry. How to solve this problem, right? So uh, I am ready to take questions in the end. Feel free to keep typing it on the chat board, right? So the problem why uh, yeah, you know this is where the major problem is. The traditional approaches are fundamentally classroom, curriculum, batch, trainer training, forty students, fifty students, hundred students right uh, just through a presentation mode it's not going to cut it it's not going to make me coding confident to take up a tech job right if i have to take up a tech job i need to code in, in a real world problem right i need to do it myself so that i can confidently say that i understand coding i'm confident to code right so the experiential way of learning is the is 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 relatively absent and people are using traditional approach to learn which is fundamentally classroom curriculum batch training trainer and through a presentation never through ever coding this is not going to work if you truly want to seek a tech job or code it just like if i want to truly want to learn bike biking i need to bike if I want to learn swimming, I need to jump into a pool. I don't have a choice. So if I want to learn, if I want to take up a tech job, I need to do coding. I need to do coding. I need to be learning it in a most experiential way, right? In a lab environment kind of a scenario and constantly solving real world problems, which helps me to be confident to take a tech job. That is the, uh, that is what, you know, uh, we believe is a way forward to actually solve this problem. Right. And as we go, I will keep talking more about it. Right. So, so fundamentally, you know, uh, but here before we get into this tech jobs to experiential learning, there are, uh, you know, eight elements that we need to be uh, you are doing before, before we actually think that, uh, you know, I should jump into this, right. We should have the conviction that Mujay are yehi karne ka hai. I want to take up a tech job. There should be a con conviction there and hence get into this. Otherwise, it will be a challenge. So next video that I'm going to play is from Kobe Bryant. Uh, is a, is a, is a, it's a seven minute video, but it's an amazing video to talk about, right? Uh, to realize it is a, a Mamba mentality video. Right, Kobe Bryant. If you know, he is the uh, you know all-star uh, basketballer. Uh, right, uh, played NBA in United States. Unfortunately, two three months back, he died out of a helicopter crash at a young age. And I, and uh, but what he talks about is very relevant. Right, so 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 please look up. So I'm just going to play this video. Right, it is going to play for five minutes, but it's amazing video to actually look up. And you can look up Mamba mentality in YouTube, and you'll find this video. So let me play that.
follow your passion first. Um, and when I retired from the game, you know, I sat there asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I... I so, so here, Kobe is talking about, you know, what am I passionate about? It's not because everybody is doing I want to do, right? Am I truly passionate about doing what I want to do? If I want a tech job, really, I do I want to become a developer, right? That is what we need to cons honestly ask. And yes, if it is, then, then we need to go about it, right? So that is what the video goes further. Um, when I retired from the game, you know, I said they're asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I could get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you've never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. Right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you find out that the rewards will come. Right. So, so, so essentially, you know, that's the decision. First, you need to make up your mind that do, do I really want a tech job? Right. And if you really want it, right, then I think we should, you should go about it. Right. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work. Is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. And this is a very important word, sponge. Sponge is what? Sponge absorbs, right? So if we want to really learn, right, we need to be absorbing, you know, whatever opportunity we get to learn, right? So so, so a lot of interesting uh, thoughts here from Kobe Bryant. I just want to outwork your potential. As hard as you believe you can work, work hard. Than I can believe, but you know, basketball is such a repetition sport. That me playing at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And like, you know, <laughs> Nick Van Exel would come up and say, Are you okay? I'm like, what? <laughs> Am I, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like I, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me it was really trying to annihilate everybody that was that I was playing against. So I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like, I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and so it's always um, that competitive nature, the work ethic, and curiosity. Because I asked a lot of questions. I'm playing with Byron Scott, I asked him a lot of questions. Eddie Job. So, so work ethic, right? So he talks about, you know, he, he worked harder than anybody else. He asked questions wherever he could, right? So that he knew that he was going in the right direction. So these are qualities that we need to learn, right? Uh, you know, uh, what he is talking about, Kobe talking about. He was great at chasing guards off the screens, and I didn't understand how to do that. I would sit with him before practice, after practice. Magic, all the Laker greats, I would always sit down and just ask him questions about certain games that I studied growing up. What actually happened there? What did you feel there? Why? We were playing against the Lakers team, and we were out here at LA. So the game was at seven. So you know what? We had to come to the Staples Center because we played this one. The Lakers have Kobe and Shaq. Okay, this is this is a championship Lakers. Uh, I want to make sure I make 400 main shots before I go back into the room. So, so you know, get in the car and get there. And as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down. And of course, I still heard the ball bouncing. I looked down like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. So he was working out for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant, <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. I was like, there about 25 minutes. And he got going. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the 
ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on the road. And after the game, like, why, why he, he works like that? So after the games, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. So this is critical, guys. If I, if I choose the passion that I want in, then I have to work harder than anybody else, right? That's what Kobe is saying here, right? You know, no matter how, how much you work, I'm going to work harder than you, right? I'm going to beat you. And, and the next few things are very nice that Kobe talks about. If your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? to do that, you have to practice, you have to train. You want to train as much as you can as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, get back out, you train, start training at six, train from six to eight. And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, do it again, right? Those are two sessions. Right now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four, four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, social, well, now you're back at it again, 9 to 11, right? relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, 2 to 4, and now you're back at it again, 7 to 9. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at 4. Right? So now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger by year five or six doesn't matter what kind of work they do in the summer they're never going to get so so i hope you understand this right he says if everybody is training two sessions i train four sessions a day and if i repeat that for five years there is no way anybody can catch up with me right that's the that's a passion to show right and if we can show that i think we are we are we are going to do wonders for ourselves because you're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work. If I start earlier, I can train more hours. And I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is. Right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, this, the, the gap's just going to wind and wind and wind and wind and wind and they won't be able to get that back. So to me, it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Well, start early. Let's do that. How do, you, how do you develop that? Or what do you, what do you learn that from? You know, I, I think it's just, it's just a matter of what's important to you. What's important to you? For, for whatever reason, you know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on the table, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. This has been absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. And uh, what can I say? My mouth. So yes, I think, uh, you know, first thing to do is that we need to contemplate, right? We need to decide, right? What do I really want to do, right? What is the kind of job I really want to do? So am I passionate about doing that job, right? So fundamentally get that right, right? Once you have decided that right, right? Uh, and, uh, and this decision, you know, one thing, look at your strengths and weaknesses, right? And, uh, and, uh, and be truthful to yourself, right? And uh, in choosing the job, it's not because somebody else, your friends are choosing, you're choosing. You're choosing because you really want to do, you believe that those are your strengths to do it, right? Uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and then make it, make that your profession, right? Uh, reconnect with what you like, 
and what you want to make your profession right if you are able to get this right right then the focus is very critical right then when you are doing you are working harder than anybody else right because it is in a competitive environment right and to realize your dreams right so that is what uh, so this, this the whole the first four points was from the kobe bryant video right it is telling you to choose what you want to choose and then be passionate about it and work hard on it right so that is what it is right uh, uh, in the tech job environment identify the organization you know if you go into travel industry you go into uh, uh, leisure the retail industry uh, you know uh, they are, they are all struggling right we should not be going there edtech is doing well right uh, health tech is doing well fintech is doing well so choose your industry that you want to you know if you can uh, and you will find jobs there right uh, so so uh, you, you know uh, this video again it's a just a, it's a much shorter video it talks about practice right uh, what do you want to practice and essentially uh, this emphasizes the fact that if you really want to you know tech is my area of focus then i need to practice i need to practice tech right and this small boy in just this uh, one minute video conveys it in a very beautiful manner right so i'm just going to play it so my question to you today is what do you practice every day what do you practice because what you practice you will get good at what do you practice do you practice joy in your life Do you practice peace in your life? Do you practice happiness in your life? Or do you practice a lot of complaining? Because if you complain, you, you will get very good at it. And you will get sad it that you will find fault with everything. Even when there's no fault that a layman cannot see you being an expert will see it what do you practice do you practice anger because if you practice anger you will get very good at it and you will get so good at it that trivial you think trivial thing will make you angry like sitting in an airplane watching the seat cross from you somehow looks better than the one you've been given and that is so unfair of the airlines what do you practice do you practice being worried cuz if you practice being worried you will get very good at it and you will get so good at it that everything will worry you including the buffalo you don't have so i propose if this is true that it's a question of practice and i propose in practice joy so so fundamentally this video is about practice right and the kid is uh, telling up in a very 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 simple way right and if you really want tech to be your job right then what do we practice we practice coding right it's as simple as it is right if we keep practicing that we'll get so good at it that a, a fantastic tech job and tech career is inevitable it's going to happen right rewards are going to come right and uh, we will next few slides will go about it right how do we actually get create that environment where we can do tech practice right uh, so so first thing that we need to resolve is that whatever i'm going to learn i'm going to do it myself right uh, so i am not if i am going to see a code right there are plenty of codes out there in the internet right i am going to write that code i am going to write that code every line of it i am going to debug that code i am going to understand that code as if i own that code right that is what i am going to practice right till i don't understand i am not giving it away right the, the, you will see that there is plethora of codes that are available in the internet right we just need to take the problem solve the problem and understand uh, write try to write code if we are stuck then go and find out in the internet for answers finish the coding understand how each and every step happened literally as if it is our baby 
and we need to practice that we need to practice that coding right that is what it is right uh, getting that real world problem there are plenty of that you know you search you will get it right if you want it you will get it right there are there are platforms that help you to do it but essentially what it is is that we need to practice right we need to practice coding if you really want a tech job right uh, identify mentors right identify your seniors uh, you know whoever have gone your neighbors you you do find out if you really want to do it you will identify those mentors who can constantly give you advice help direction right so that is important right and uh, you know look up for organizations which are supporting students to learn in this manner not through classroom curriculum training approaches not through pre recorded videos but it is the platforms that are helping you to do it yourself right uh, they are helping you to it's 100% experiential learning platforms go and look up for those platforms right where you get to practice and when you practice you become confident at it when you are confident at it the tech jobs are there for you right so that is what i wanted to take you through so so essentially as i said right uh, you know bridge labs is a is an employability platform uh, our goal is to build tech competency among engineers and then take you into hardcore deep tech jobs right to build tech competency we run coding club uh, as a program right in this we uh, the very first thing is understanding the linux uh, workshop right it is a linux terminal workshop we want to offer it free for you right you can register you can get it you and you will see that what is a real experiential environment could be like right where you practice where you see mentors practicing with you and you practice with them right and you keep practicing that right you get good at it right so we want to give you one portion of that uh, program for free of cost for you to actually practice uh, you know and see that experiential learning process so that you know really really want to find something like that to advance your tech career so 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 essentially you can write email to us contact us at bridgelabs.com right uh, i will uh, uh, post both of this uh, the link as well as uh, the email address in the chat group so you can you can write to us you can register yourself in the link that i am sharing right so give me one sec so let me uh, uh, let me get back to the link so let me this is the so i am going to share this link in the chat window right so this is asking simple question so that we can reach so that we can give you this linux workshop that is free for you to to see the what is an experiential learning platform is right to experience it yourself right uh, give me one second so let me uh, get back to the window right uh, uh, so i'm just going to post it here uh, uh, give me one second so i'm just posting it to all right so so you can register in this guys and uh, i am posting the email address you can write to us right so so you have everything with you here uh uh I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, yeah. I, 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 the intent here, you know, to all, uh, you know, uh, the message is same, right? I have been talking about tech because uh, um, the focus for Bridge Labs and for myself has been tech employment for engineers. But in the truth is that any field that you want to take up, right? What we saw Kobe Bryant talking about Mamba mentality. where we want to figure out what we really want to do right and then go at it and do it through a practice mode an experiential mode so that we get very good at it right so that we can take up jobs in that area right so so that is what uh, the message can be applied to any other field right it's a very generic message it's not a tech message only right uh, uh, yeah but you will hear me talking tech 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 because that's what we do right uh, so yeah any questions q and a i am more than happy to answer uh uh thank you so much mr narayan for your wonderful session i'm sure uh, the attendees were able to get a 
some value out of the session. It was absolutely great. And yeah, we have a few questions in the Q and A round. Uh, okay. I can just read them out for you. If that's yeah. okay. Right. Uh, so one attendee asks, "What are the jobs of the future, according to you?" Ah, okay. Good question. Actually, you know, according to McKinsey, right? If you get McKinsey is uh, one of the largest player here, which does uh, analysis uh, about trends. Right. According to McKinsey, right, tech is going to produce the technology field, the engineering field is going to produce anywhere between 25 to 50 million jobs globally in next six to 12 years. Right. India alone needs to produce anywhere between six to 12 million jobs. Right. But if you look at any other field out there, it is going to disrupt. Right. So they are saying that 300 to 400 million jobs are going to be disrupted. Right. Uh, you know, the lawyer is not going to do exactly what he is doing today. Right. Tech is going to disrupt there. Uh, a medicine, uh, you know, it's a, we know telemedicines are coming. Right. So take up any profession, a chart accountancy profession is going to. So anybody who is doing any other field, they need to be tech aware. Right. Uh, so yeah, if you look at United States uh, have started a big proponency of coding for kids. Why? Because it is important to be tech aware. It is important to be digital aware, right? So, so, so keep that in mind uh, in anything that you do. Combine the tech aspect of it, the digital aspect of it. You will see that you are you are doing well in your career. Uh, great. So the next question comes from Mr. Saurabh Patel. He says. Uh, just wanted to understand your perspective. I'm an MBA from a reputed institute, SIBM Pune, and an entrepreneur since the last five years. Due to the current scenario of the market, I wish to get back to jobs. So how do I do that? I think, uh, you know, industry today loves, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they like entrepreneurs. You know, because, you know, if you look at Jack Ma, if you know Jack Ma, right, he is the... Uh, he is the founder of Alibaba, right? One of the top uh, five richest in the world, right? Uh, you know, uh, he says that 20 to 30, everybody should work with startups. Why? Because the kind of experience that you would get in a startup is enormous and industry respects that, right? So, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at me, I had two failed startups before third one being successful, right? So, so industry didn't look down upon me. Industry actually uh, liked that I know I have to fail startups. That is a humongous learning that I have gone through. So fundamentally, you are not in, in at any disadvantage. You know, you actually uh, go and write a LinkedIn post about yourself. You will realize that there are plenty of people coming after you because they want entrepreneurs. Because they want, they they believe the new age job is going to be more entrepreneurial, right? Uh, you know, where where it is about responsibility taking and ownership taking. Great. So the next question is, is it the right time to invest in technology to uplift my company? Yes, absolutely. COVID has uh, taught us, right? COVID has taught us that, you know, if we have not enabled work from home, then we are at a disadvantage, right? Uh, so digitization is a bottom line need for anybody to do, right? Uh, to, to essentially enable, right? So automations are going to be picked up. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the processes that you have internally are going to be digitized more and more. So these are inevitable that is going to happen. Industry 2.0, we have been talking talking for a long time for manufacturing industry. It is going to become more real, right, where data are flowing real time uh, and people are able to watch the machines, watch the performance, watch the productivity, right, not sitting next to it, but sitting somewhere. So these are all going to happen, right, it, and the COVID is going to fast track all of this. Absolutely. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Mikhil Desai. He says, uh, which tech organizations are least hit post COVID according to you? Uh, health tech, space tech, right? Ad tech, uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, plenty of industries, right? You, you just uh, leave the leisure, travel, retail industry out, right? Uh, others majority are, are, are on track. Right. Uh, so the next question, I'll just club uh, two questions here. So uh, one is, how can we upscale ourselves being a job seeker? And what kind of roles would be in great demand in the coming time? So 
I, 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 you know, I, again, I'll just refer back, right? Uh, you know, whatever jobs you do, right? You really need to uh, feel passionate about it. And uh, you need to practice it. You need to uh, really practice it in kind of a field, right? Today, uh, you know, job seekers, we are really worried about, uh, you, know, Mirko, you know, what kind of a salary will I get? But in, in the initial formative years, it is not the salary, it's the experience that counts, right? Uh, you know, a failed entrepreneur is far more respected than a person who is having a job. So, so fundamentally, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. get out there where you can get real experiences, right? And then you will see that, you know, your career takes off. You get, get out there where it gives you a real playing field to work with, right? And be passionate about, you know, really we want to do it, hence you get in there. Not because you're getting a good salary, hence you're getting in there. That's not going to work. That's going to stop somewhere. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, for the last uh, point, Mr. Vikash Chaturvedi has listed out some great uh, points from his end. He says that the top five soft skills for 2020 are creativity, persuasion, collaboration, adaptability, and emotional intelligence. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah, again, all of them are uh, are good, right? Adaptability and uh, you know emotional intelligence is highly talked about. Presence of mind is highly talked about. So, uh, yeah, uh, ability to communicate and uh, uh, collaborate in a work environment, especially in a remote environment. So, I don't, uh, you know, all, all this are right, right? Uh, uh, it's just that uh, are we able to practice and uh, do it? That's all that matters. Absolutely. And similarly, the top five hard skills for 2020, he says, are blockchain and cloud computing, analytical reasoning, artificial intelligence and UX design, business analysis, and sales and affiliate marketing. So how much do you agree I think, with uh, I think blockchain is still uh, very, very nascent there because it requires a consortium, consortium of governments and large financial institutions. Startups really cannot impact uh, in a blockchain world, right? Uh, just because uh, you know we, we, uh, we have a digital currency it cannot, uh, you know, we can't say that, you know, blockchain is in supply chain, blockchain is in everything, right? Because you need that consortium to come and work together. So I don't see blockchain uh, is a trend is going to take some time to understand. Uh, cloud computing is real. Cloud computing is happening right now. The majority of the tech jobs are in cloud computing, right? Analytical, uh, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, I think we are still, uh, you know, uh, that's a skill to acquire because two to three years from now, that is going to be really big. Industry is still trying to grasp it. So, so uh, cloud computing with machine learning or data engineering is going to become a good combination to have, uh, right? Uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, UX is always going to be a king, right? If you really focus on that area. Right. So, you, so there are so many areas, you know, you know, the sales, right. If your sales, you know, are we a box seller or a solution seller? Because online sales are going to be more and more about solution sales, a SaaS model. It's not going to be a box where I just sold a Microsoft office software, right. Uh, marketing, affiliate marketing, of course. Right. I, I think uh, yeah, I don't see, uh, you just need to choose it right. Absolutely right. Uh, great, wonderful. So we have one last question. Uh, if you agree, I know the time is less, but I guess we can just take one last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Yeah. Tell yeah, so the question is from Mr. Shiva. He says, recently I registered for one OPC before lockdown. Is it the right time to continue? Shall I need to wait for the right time? Uh, can, uh, can he uh, tell me the full form of OPC? I, I don't know what is OPC. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Shiva, if you can just revert on this. Yeah, if you can type in one person company. Okay. <laughs> Didn't know that. Actually, you know, I, I, uh, you, uh, you got a good point, Shiva, because, uh, you know, what United States is uh, promoting, promoting big time is uh, Soho, small office, home office, right? Uh, yeah, you, we, we are talking about gig economy out there where we have a choice as a single person to work with multiple of companies as freelancers. So, so really if you, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and literally, you know, this is the, this is a transformation that is going to happen. Right. Uh, but it is important uh, that, you know, whatever you do, you get good at it. Right. Uh, because 
that is critical if you if you are a one person company right but gig economy is happening a uh, small office home office is going to be promoted big time even in india too so 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 absolutely uh, right direction to go but uh, you have to have lot of self discipline and uh, self capability to promote yourself to do it Great. wonderful so uh, thank you so much mr narayan thank you so much for your wonderful session and for answering all the questions very patiently as well and thank you to all the attendees for taking part uh, in this webinar uh, we hope we were able to add some value to your lives through this and uh, anything else you would like to say mr narayan no uh, no absolutely been my pleasure uh, uh, right and uh, been my pleasure talking to you and uh, you know i uh, i love doing this right and uh, you know it's important we have such a big young population out there and if we can really find a way it's amazing for each one of us thank you uh, great so i'll just make sure that i send uh, the google form link that you have shared i will also make sure that i'll send it in the thank you email that we sent to all the attendees and if you have any further questions or anything please you can uh, freely reach out to me and i'll make sure that your queries are sent to the right person in the bridge labs team as well so yeah thank you so much we we'll yeah sincerely appreciate that bye bye thank you. we'll see you in our next webinar uh, we have one on the 22nd of may which is uh, regarding of the funding scenario uh, during and post covid 19 so if you are a startup who's looking to raise funds you might want to uh, know an investor's perspective on that so please if you are interested reach out to me i'll be very happy to share further details about the same and until the next time uh, thank you so much stay safe uh, thank you